Muy buenos días a todos los ministros y a todos los hermanos en los diferentes países. Good morning to all the ministers and to all the brethren in different countries. Especially greetings to the missionary Miguel Bermúdez Marín and to all those who are in meetings today. May God bless you greatly. It is truly a blessing and privilege that the Lord grants me to be able to send you this greeting today. And thankful to God for having placed us to live in this wonderful time. The time where many prophets and righteous desired to live, desired to see, desired to be in. Because it is the time where the greatest promises would be revealed and would be made known and would be fulfilled in the midst of the believers who would be living in this time, which is this time. And the believers are us. In other words, everything we are obtaining now is what all of them desired or longed for. And God has been pleased to place us to live in this time and to be present hearing and seeing everything God has been fulfilling in our midst, which is promise and prophecies that he had already spoken in ancient times, in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament, promises that he would be fulfilling in our midst, and we have been participants of those promises because we are part of those promises. We are one of those promises, one of those prophecies. Because, for example, one of them is, the wise shall understand. Only those short words are prophecies that would be fulfilled at the end of time. And those prophecies, we have been already seeing them fulfilled in ourselves. We can touch that prophecy. We can say to our chosen brother or sister who is next to us in one of the meetings, you are that word that is written and you are that living prophecy, that prophecy that has taken life. That prophecy is you and that prophecy is me. In other words, those wise ones are us, see? They are promises and prophecies being fulfilled, being materialized in this time. And many of the prophets and righteous and believers of past ages and of old times who desired to be in this time, in our time, and it wasn't granted to them. But to you it has been granted to be in this time and to know all those mysteries that God would be fulfilling in our time and those mysteries being materialized, being fulfilled in our midst. Those mysteries and those prophecies and promises, some have already been fulfilled, others are being fulfilled, and others will be fulfilled later on, which one of them is the transformation of our bodies, which we are longing for and we are asking, we are crying out to God so that God will soon fulfill it, fulfill that promise of the transformation. And as that time is approaching, God has been in this stage of preparation, in this stage in which God has left us with and allow us this time in which he had already spoken in past times and through the Reverend William Branham and also through our friend and brother William Soto Santiago, our dispensational prophet messenger, who brought us this glorious message, this message that prepares the church bride to soon be transformed and to be raptured. In other words, everything that God would be fulfilling in the midst of the church, God had it already spoken and prophesied through the prophets of the Old and New Testament. And this time of preparation, which is a time where the church will reach the perfect faith, 
the faith where it will be so high and so elevated that we will be able to access those other dimensions and thus merge this earthly body with our theophany. There are great mysteries which God has been opening to us and we go on understanding how all this is going to be so that it will be something common among us to be seeing and accessing that dimension. For example, the part of divine healing will be something common. All that will be something common among us because there have been divine healings and there have been many miracles among the church of the Lord. But there will come a time when it will be something more frequent and will be something more common among us. In other words, as we are getting closer to that time of the perfection, the more we will have that power that the church bride is desiring. Since the day of Pentecost until now, where they obtained back then the first fruits. But as that spiritual temple of the Lord, which is His church, while it was being built, God was giving more and more power to His church. God never took the power away from His church. He never took the Holy Spirit away from His church, which is the power of God. The power of God is the Word. And as the word has come through each messenger, God was giving more and more power to his church. And for this end time, for the golden age, the age of the cornerstone, the power will come in all of its fullness. The power of God will come in the midst of his church. We will reach a peak part, which was shown by the Reverend William Branham. God, through the angel, showed him in that vision everything that would be happening in that vision shown to the Reverend William Branham regarding the vision of the Great Tent Cathedral. And notice what he tells us in the message. This is our beloved brother and friend William Soto Santiago tells us in the message the Lord Jesus Christ changing from lamb to lion of the tribe of Judah Preach on September 13 of 2014 in Cali, Colombia, it says. Therefore, something great is getting ready to happen in this end time, called the third pool by the Reverend William Branham, which will be fulfilled in the fulfillment of the great vision he had, the vision of a great tent cathedral, where the fullness of Christ will be, the fullness of God, the fullness of the Holy Spirit manifesting Himself and He will shake this world. Remember that the tenth vision and all the miracles, they would be at a worldwide level, international level, international miracles, he says. Let's see if we can find it really quick here, that part in the book of quotations. That is on page 50 of the book of quotations where he talks about that, the international miracles. It says, don't you see how it is? Paragraph 436. The people today, how they are great something going to shake the whole world and everything. That's unscriptural. No, sir. The next thing in order is the going of the church. Reading the church ages, you see what? Now, these are the things that took place is during the time of the wedding ceremony when the church is in glory. God returns back with great wonders to perform international miracles and things by the Jews. Don't go to the church at all. And he writes, Moses and Elijah and the miracles. But notice what he says here in the message, Elijah the Restore, by our brother William preach on September 6, 2014, for there it says, no way for the church. And apparently, as Brother William says, that there is a contradiction, but there is no contradiction. Look at it says here in this part of this message. And now we're in the page 136 of the book of quotation. 
being that it was shown to the Reverend William Branham that there will be great miracles and wonders in that tent vision. That is the place where it says that the miracles are for the Jews. Let's see over here where he quotes that paragraph. 1208. It says, Will the bride, will the bride before Jesus comes, will she have all power of Holy Ghost to perform miracles, rise dead, and so on as in the latter reign? Or... Is this the latter reign for the 144,000 Jews? Will all ministers have this? Are we or are we just waiting for the coming? Now, latter reign, 144,000 Jews? No. That's when Elijah and Moses, there's where the miracles take place. Brother William says, miracles will take place with and under the ministries of Moses and Elijah. There is where they take place. He keeps reading. The things that people's been looking for, the Pentecostals, for miracles. That's where that all take place, in that, under them. See, that's Elijah and Moses. We're just to wait on the coming of the Lord. Just wait. Keep your lamps trimmed, all filled full of oil. Pray up every hour, not every day, every hour. Just keep ready. Be ready. Be sweet and watching. And now he says, And now, this is Brother William, and now the tent vision shows that there will be miracles. Any person may think there is a contradiction. There is no contradiction. Page 137, page 137, paragraph 1239 says, now he's quoting this. This question here is this, will there be miracles done by the bride? Yes, sir. It's being done right now. That's right, see? But don't look for something that great or bring the heavens and close the heavens. It rain not. That goes into the Jews now. And we look that paragraph up here in the book of quotation. Which is 12... 39. There he writes, it's on page 137, because the book he had is on page 139, on paragraph 1219, and on top of that paragraph he writes, great miracles in nature is for the Jews. And he goes on to say, on quote 1236, paragraph 1236 says, And then shall he send his angels, and gather together his elect from the four winds, and shall, and the outermost part of the earth, and to the outermost part of the earth, almost part of the earth, to the outermost part of heaven. That's talking of the resurrection, the translation, going up. He'll send forth his angels to gather. Did you ever think what the angels are? Hmm? Messengers. He'll gather them together, congregate them together, see? Bringing them, bind them together from the utmost part of the earth to the almost part of heaven. The word that was being made manifest on earth. See, get it? The word's being spoken. Here it's manifested, fulfilled, wrote Brother William. And if we look for that paragraph in the book of quotations, which he quoted there above, he writes, Moses and Elijah equals resurrection and rapture. And when he speaks below, where it says, bind them together from the almost part of the earth, to the almost part of heaven. The word that was, he writes Elijah, being made, and he writes Moses, manifest on earth. See, get it? The word's being spoken. He writes Elijah. Here it's manifested with Moses, he wrote. And just before that, where it says, get it? The word's being spoken. Elijah. Here is manifested with Moses, he wrote. And at the bottom, or below, he wrote Revelation 7, 1 to 17, and 14, 1 to 5. 
Our brother William continues saying, These are the things that are promised for the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, we have to be prepared because something big is about to happen. And it's all being intertwined in the divine program. And there he quotes from paragraph 1164, Remember that they which are alive and remain shall not hinder those which are sleeping. For the trump of God, that last trumpet, the sixth one has just sounded. And that last trumpet, like the last seal, will be the coming of the Lord. It shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Brother William says, in other words, the seven trumpet, and keeps reading, and that last trumpet, like that last seal, will be the coming of the Lord. Now he says, and now it tells us that the last trumpet, like the last seal, is the coming of the Lord. That is in paragraph 1164 on this page 129. But 1150 on page 128 of this version, it says, Now as soon as this church and that mystery of the seventh seal, or the seventh seal, the mystery of going, and the juice is called by the mystery of the seventh trumpet, which is two prophets, Elijah and Moses. And Brother William says, And here we have read that the seventh trumpet, like the seventh seal, are what? The coming of the Lord, because the Son of Man comes with his angels, and we will leave it there. Brother William says, there. And we continue here reading where we stop from this message. Let's see. I have here several excerpts, but the one I'm reading from is the Lord Jesus Christ changing from Lamb to the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He goes on to say, the Reverend William Branham said, Lord, though it will be out of time, shake this world as it has never been shaken. He says, I know it is easy to pray, to ask like this, because it is promised. It is a promise. In other words, he was praying, asking according to what God has promised for this end time. That is why we can be asking for what it is promised in the Holy Scriptures for each and every one of us for this time, because it is what it is promised. That is why it is easy to pray for that. That is why we should pray and cry out for those promises, because they are going to be fulfilled in this time and they are to be materialized in each one of us. He continues saying, These are the things that the church will see in this end time. After the seventh age, what is coming is what is promised to prepare the church, to give her the faith to be transformed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Reverend William Branham said that the third pool will be for the bride, the elect, those who are going to be transformed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb, but it will also be for the foolish virgins, and it will also be for the world. In other words, the third pool will impact the church bride, which will receive the faith to be transformed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and will impact the foolish virgins as well, who go out under the ministry of Moses and Elijah. And it will also impact the world. In that message of Let us see here if we can find it real quick where he speaks that those ministries will be the ones that will bring out the foolish virgins. I had it here. Let's see. where he says it in the message. Revelation chapter 4. 
on page 40, Revelation chapter 4, part 3, preach on January 8th of 61, it says there, now in Revelation 15, the remnant of the woman's seed, which was the tribulation saints that went through the tribulation, was found, look, standing on the sea, and it was filled with fire, blood, red blazes, licking forth, the fire of God. They had gotten the victory over the beast, Rome, over his number, over the letter of his name, and over his image, the confederation of churches, and had come out. And though the preaching of Moses and Elijah, those two prophets that will appear to Israel to pull out the, this group of people, those tribulation period saints, back in that time, they'll be brought in. And he writes, Moses and Elijah pull out the foolish. It is those ministries of Moses and Elijah that pull out the foolish. As our brother William tells us there in this message that we are reading. Because he says, notice something here, that he also represents that ministry of Moses and Elijah in Elijah and Elisha. Look at this here. In the book, Question and Answers, that was preached on August 30 of 64 in the afternoon. There was one in the morning. This one is in the afternoon. On page 17, it says, it was a question he was asked. Will the prophets of Malachi 4 be the one to call out the Gentile remnant of Revelation 7, 9, even though they go through the tribulation period? No, no. After Revelation 7 is where he seen the 144,000 sealed. And after that, he saw coming up, coming back was that great number which no man could number, which was the bride. It will have Malachi 4 will be finished and the bride taken up. And then this group. Remember that that great number that returns for the millennium with the Lord is that great number that is the bride of all made up by all the ages and the believers of our time. In other words, it will be a great and mighty army that after the marriage supper of the Lamb, after those three and a half years of the Great Tribulation are fulfilled, that great number of people will be returning to earth, will be those that make up the Bride of the Lord of the ages and those of our time. He continues saying, Malachi 4 will be finished and the bride taken up. And then this group of Elijah and Elisha returned back to the earth, the church to go through the tribulation period. That is the church which are the foolish. But Elijah and Elisha will not have anything to do with the sleeping virgin. They are Gentiles. They'll be sent only to the Jews. And he writes, Elijah and Elisha, Moses and Elijah. And there we have been seeing how these ministries of Moses and Elijah are the ones that have that work of also bringing out the foolish virgins. In other words, this third pool, the fulfillment of the third pool, will impact the church bride as we have seen and it will also impact the foolish virgins. Like he continues to say here, our brother William. And it will impact the foolish virgins also, who go out under the ministry of Moses and Elijah, and he also going to impact the world. Just like in the first coming of Christ, we find that when he died, after having his ministry among the living, then he went down to the imprisoned souls, who could no longer be saved, who were in hell, 
which also typify mankind, the world, who will be living in this end time, that although they will no longer have the opportunity of salvation, they will see Christ manifested in the midst of his church in the fulfillment of that third pool. Remember that also there before he went down to hell and preached to those imprisoned spirits that were disobedient at the time of Noah. Before that, he was there also giving testimony to Thomas, who represents the foolish. Notice that ministry working through the foolish. And then also before that, the Son of Man was already being revealed in his first coming to the elect of that time. Let's say it is in type and figure of the bride of this time. And he was opening the scripture to them. In other words, when he was appearing to them, on no less than eight occasions to his disciples he was with them many of them didn't even realize that it was the Lord himself opening the scripture to them he was in a time of teaching see notice when he joined with those walking to Emmaus and he joined them and it seems like it was somebody from there from that region and he began When he hears them, Brother Brown, there is a place where he says, I think I read it in Sunday or Saturday, when he says that they were talking about what had happened to the Lord. Hey, this shouldn't have happened to him. Notice that this happened to him, how they stripped him naked, how they stuck that spear in him, how they mocked him, and all that they were talking about of what happened to the Lord. And they were also saying, but we had heard that they had kind of seen him. In other words, they were talking about everything that had happened and also talking about what was happening, those rumors that were being heard around, that they had seen him. And he starts talking to them and to quote the scriptures to them, how all that had to happen. See, it was a time of teaching. And that is something that we should update everything that happened at the first coming of the Lord, update it at this time. Because Brother Branham said that everything would be parallel. In other words, it would be parallel in everything. How those three groups were impacted with the first coming of the Lord, both those who were being thought and being prepared to receive the first fruits of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost, as well as the foolish, represented there in Thomas, as well as the lost when he descended to hell. And in this end time, under that manifestation that God will have in the midst of his church, in the fulfillment of the tenth vision, the church bride will be impacted in this stage of teaching where God is opening the scripture to us he is opening our understanding to understand all that has been promised and spoken through the prophets of the Old Testament and the New Testament and showing us that all those things that had to be fulfilled and how to prepare us to obtain that rapturing faith and he will also be speaking to that denominational world the foolish virgins represented in Thomas, speaking to them also and increasing their faith for them to give their lives in the Great Tribulation. They will be prepared for that. And also, as the fifth dimension, hell will be open here on this planet Earth. The fifth dimension, when it opens, well, those who will no longer have a chance of salvation will also be impacted. In other words, the three groups as they were impacted there with the first coming of the Lord, the three groups will be impacted here in this end time. Of course, in this end time, the 144,000 will also see that powerful manifestation of the power of God in the midst of His church. But He doesn't come for them. He comes for His church bride, which will be in this end time in the golden stage, in the stage of the age of the cornerstone in which 
that rapturing faith, that translation faith, will be spoken, preached in this time in which we are living. This time is the time where the dispensation of the kingdom is being fully opened in the midst of the human race. Just as the dispensation of grace was open back then on the day of Pentecost, here in the year of Pentecost, in the year of Jubilee, the dispensation of the kingdom is being opened and is open in the midst of the human race where he would be as the lion of the tribe of Judah, no longer as the lamb, but as the lion. So, that is why when he spoke to us in those messages that we read recently, that he said that we are still in the dispensation of grace. He spoke it in that message. We can put it there as a reference. In other words, he was still there as the lamb. And now, he is as the lion, as the lion of the tribe of Judah, as king of kings and lord of lords in his reclaiming work. He goes on to say, in this message we are reading, the Lord Jesus Christ changing from lamb to lion of the tribe of Judah, he says, and the foolish virgins are also going to see what Christ will be carrying out in this end time which will have to go through the Great Tribulation. But they are going to see that manifestation before the Great Tribulation. See? They will be prepared to go through the Great Tribulation. In other words, the third pool, in the fulfillment of the tenth vision, will be from one moment to another intertwined with that denominational world because there would already be marking an important stage in the divine program because that would be the exact hour of his coming. He spoke about it in the book of quotations. <coughs> Let us look it up real quick here on page 10A. Let's see if it's that one. It is. Page 10A in the book of quotation, paragraph 99. The very minute that outside denominational world begins to receive this message, that's exactly the hour he's coming. When they went the sleeping virgin realized she didn't have any oil in her lamp, and when she came to knock on the door to get it, that was exactly when the bride went out, when the wise virgin left. That's right. They didn't get in. No. And them organizations won't come in. They won't have the opportunity to. Time the message gets around, the church will be gone. And he writes, Around, he marks it very much there. And he writes, the wise and the foolish and the rapture. And above, when the denominational world starts receiving the message. And the scripture, Matthew 25, 10 to 13. And That is what will be happening in the fulfillment of the third pool, which occurs before the Great Tribulation begins. The same thing that it is for Israel, for the 144,000, that Brother Branham says that they will receive, that is, they will see and they will be sealed before the Great Tribulation begins in the Book of the Seals. That is on page 424 of the Book of the Seals. In the message, the sixth seal, 
That's just before the tribulation period. In other words, they are called out. It says just before. Their wrestle with God unto 144,000 of the tribe of Israel are called out right there. That's just before the tribulation period. Who, who is it that are called out and taken out? Who does that work? The ministries of Moses and Elijah. In other words, those events were promised that would happen before the great tribulation begins. As well as before the great tribulation begins, also the church bride will be prepared for the rapture. You see, each group will be prepared for what they are going to receive, and each individual will be preparing himself for what they are going to receive. And the elect, the church bride, will be preparing herself, will be taking advantage of this time in this time of teaching, preparing herself for adoption, for the rapture, so that we can go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The other group of the foolish ones will be preparing themselves to go through the Great Tribulation. They will be preparing themselves and taking hold of the Word, of the message. They will be feeding themselves with the knowledge that they can't receive the mark of the image, the seal of the image and the mark, nor all that the beast will be imparting in the Great Tribulation because that is death for the one who takes it. In other words, the foolish will have that knowledge and will give their lives for the message. And so will the 144,000. And already the lost, well, they will already know that they will no longer have opportunity for salvation. In other words, all mankind, all of the human race, that is, let us say, divided in all those groups, each one of those groups in this end time, in this stage where we are, will be preparing themselves for what they are going to receive. He goes on to say, the Jews are also going to say, this is what we are waiting for, but he's not coming for them. He's coming for his church. See? There he also includes the Jews. He goes on to say, if the world is going to be impacted, shaken by that third pool, in some way it will gradually come in. And for the time being, when the way is already prepared for that manifestation and Christ finishes his work of intercession in heaven, notice how the way God has been preparing it to get to that peak part of the tenth vision or that culminating part of when Christ comes out of the throne of intercession. Because look, it goes on to say, when the way is already prepared for that manifestation and Christ finishes his work of intercession in heaven, comes out of his work as high priest and lamb, because he will have already called and gathered all his chosen ones in his mystical body of believers. Then he will take He will claim the book sealed with seven seals, which is the book of life, which has the Lamb's book of life section and the other section. He will take it, open it in heaven, and do his reclaiming work. He will bring that book to his church. When does he bring that book to his church? After he comes out of the throne of intercession, after all the elect have been called and gathered together. He will bring that book to his church, for which he will have to have a ministry being operated in the midst of his church. For the Lord God will do nothing except he reveal his secrets unto his servants, his prophets, first. And uh, there is where some people have lost that ministry, which was on earth, in our beloved brother and friend, William Soto Santiago. That is where they lost it. And then there, they already think, no, he has to come adopted and has to come and fulfill all that. And has to stand and has to preach and has to bring us all that revelation and has to tell us everything we need for the rapturing faith. All of that is being fulfilled. Brethren and friends who listens to me, 
God is already fulfilling all of that. Now in the present time. God is fulfilling all that through the instrument that God has at this time. For the Lord God will do nothing except He reveal His secrets first to His servants, the prophets. God always has to have an instrument through which He works. And as God is the God of the Spirit of the prophets, He can place in a person the ministry that He desires to place and operate. Because when God uses a veil of flesh and the time of that veil of flesh is over, He moves on to another veil of flesh. It has always been like that in the whole trajectory of the human race. God cannot change that way, that form. And it is the same thing that happened at the time of the first coming of the Lord. But since God fulfills it in such a simple way, people overlook it and they fight against what God is carrying out. And notice further on how and who and what will have those that will be able to have that key to open and enter or close and nobody enter. You are going to see something here. He goes on to say, for which, the last sentence, for which he will have to have a ministry being operated in the midst of his church. For the Lord God will do nothing without first revealing his secrets to his servants, his prophets. Therefore, there will be a ministry in his church, prophetic, that will be able to receive that title deed. And therefore, the whole church bride of the Lord Jesus Christ will be receiving it automatically, which will be represented in the instrument that God will have for the last days. Just as each age was represented in the messenger of each age, who received the message, the revelation for each age, and gave it to the people. And therefore, the messenger with the people became the word for that age. For each age, it was so. And further on, in this same message, in another paragraph, he says, I am as Joshua and Caleb said, as Caleb said, who was as strong as the day he began. I am every day with more courage, aware that every year that passes, I am one year closer to the full fulfillment of the Word of God promised for this end time, aware that it is gradually being fulfilled, and then at the end, a summary of all that has been fulfilled in a full manifestation from behalf of God. What is coming and what will come at the end of all that has been fulfilled? A summary. Look at how he was already speaking to us of this time from some time ago. And what are we obtaining at this time within this teaching that is being spoken in part in the fulfillment of the 10th cathedral of the vision of the great 10th cathedral? Where it will begin with the word being spoken, the word being open to God's chosen ones? A summary of all that God has and is fulfilling. And that summary is the content of the teaching which is brought by the seven thunders of Revelation chapter 10, which brings the rapturing faith. And he goes on to say, I feel like Joshua and Caleb. And how about you, Miguel? So Caleb was saying to Joshua, let me go and conquer the mountain. Miguel, which mountain was it where Abraham dwelt? Hebron. So he was a prince. Of the princes that went, Joshua and Caleb were one, prince of the tribe of Judah, and Joshua was prince of what tribe? Of Ephraim, of the tribe of Joseph, and therefore of the tribe of Ephraim, where the birthright blessing is. That is why when speaking of the promised land and of entering the promised land with the people, reference is made to Joshua, because Joshua was from the tribe of Ephraim, that is from the half-tribe of Joseph, the other half-tribe was the tribe of Manasseh. In other words, Joseph had a double blessing. 
The birthright blessing is always double. The firstborn always had a double blessing. And their brother Miguel makes a participation. He asks a question. His brother Miguel says, A question with them. Those two men, Joshua and Caleb, are they not related to the two olive trees? They went all the way together through the wilderness and went into the promised land to conquer it. They were conquerors of the promised land. Don't they have some connection with... That's Brother Miguel. And Brother William answers, In some other message, I will tell you. For now, I can tell you that Moses and Elijah promised for the last day who appeared on Mount Transfiguration are the two olive trees of Zechariah chapter 4, verse 11 to 14, and of Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 to 14. And Peter and Paul are also types of the two olive trees, because the Reverend William Branham says, as Peter and Paul brought the gospel to the Gentiles, the Gentiles will take it to the Jews. That is in the Edited Age book, page 36. And in other places, they say that it is Moses and Elijah who take the gospel to the Gentiles. Now, this is dessert, because we were already done, but Miguel is always looking for dessert. He has a sweet tooth, as we say. So the ministries of Moses and Elijah that will be manifested in the last day. Someday we will see if one of the ministries will be in one person one in another, or one in another, or will it be in one person, the three ministries, that of Jesus, Moses, and Elijah? We'll see that later on. And it may be before the transformation. It will be when the seventh seal is opened to the church. There is when we will clearly see that mystery, because the Son of Man comes with his angels. We're going to leave that alone now. And then we are not going to give an opinion, but we are going to leave it alone. When will we know this great mystery of the seventh seal? It will be before the transformation. That is, it will be in this time of teaching. And as he tells us there, we will be seeing if one of the ministries will be in one person, another in another, another in another, or it will be in one person the three ministries that of Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Remember that the Lord comes with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And we know that the trumpet of God are the ministries of Moses and Elijah. And we also know that in the time of the Reverend William Branham, there was a shout. Behold, the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. And also, another time, there was that voice of archangel. Shout, voice of archangel and trumpet of God. In other words, there, God is showing in that scripture how the coming of the Lord would be, which was also shown on Mount Transfiguration in chapter 17 of the Gospel according to Matthew, where it shows the order of the transformation. That is also in the book of quotations. We have read it several times in these days, how their brother Branham shows the order of the coming of the Lord on Mount Transfiguration, what the coming of the Lord to his church would be, was shown on Mount Transfiguration. In other words, in this end time, in the time of the final ministry of God, of the ministry under the tent, there would be revealed that great mystery of the second coming of the Lord, which would give the faith to be transformed in rapture to all the believers, the elect of God, the church bride, which would be gathered in the age of the cornerstone, which corresponds to the dispensation of the kingdom. And it tells us in the book of quotations on page 159 in the book of quotations. Notice that something here, paragraph 1414, 
It says, I don't care how much you can preach, how well you do this, and how much you love, that's one of the inlets to spirit. You can't love with your body. You love with your spirit. And he writes, you love with your spirit. That's one of the inlets. And you can love and even love God and still not be right. You can cast out devils and preach and do these things, still not be right. Jesus said so. Said many would come in that day. Jesus said so. Said many would come in that day. That word settles it. And he writes, Moses and Elisha. On top where it says the word, And he writes, Moses and Elijah settles it. And he writes, it is the word that gives the yes or no. He writes that above, further up. Where it says, Moses and Elijah is where he writes, it is the word that gives the yes or no. Who will give the yes or no at this in time? The word. And who is going to be the word? Moses and Elisha. Notice what he tells us in the message, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Let us read here first where he tells us in the Anointed One in the End Time, page 47 in this message, it says, What he say? Notice, you workers of iniquity, I never even knew you. What is iniquity? Ask somebody. It's something that you know you ought to do and you won't do it. They know that word. They hear it. You're listening to this tape. You're listening to this message. You see the Lord God say so. And he writes, iniquity equals something that you know you should do but don't. You see him confirm it, make it true. And you know this just as plain as the sun is shining outside. But you that hold on to your denomination, hold on to those false things, you workers of iniquity. Oh, yes, I had great campaigns. I done this, I done that. Said, you depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Well, the Holy Ghost fell on me. I don't doubt that a bit. I spoke in tongues, I sang in the Spirit, I done, I don't doubt that a bit. No questions to that. Oh, brother, sister, what kind of a condition? This is a troubling time. Where we at? This word is coming to life now. And in this message that I'm going to read of Revelation chapter 4, part 1, Look at what the Reverend William Branham says here. He says, this is on page 19. Now, after he showed him all that mystery of them seven golden candlesticks holding the seven stars and a white wig on, and so forth, and feet like brass and eyes like fire, the symbols. Then he heard the same voice, watch, speaking from heaven. And he looked up, and he saw an open door. Oh, an open door into heaven. How do you get in? By Christ Jesus. That one door, one way, no other way. And he writes, Revelation 8.1. And Revelation chapter 8, 1 is the second coming of the Lord. It is the seventh seal. Any man that climbs up any other way, same is a thief and a robber. And in the parable of the one who climbed up and was at the wedding supper without a garment on, was found guilty and bound and cast out into the outer darkness. Only one way coming to the wedding supper. I believe I preached on it here not long ago. Whenever the bridegroom, when a man got, gets married in the old country, he has to give the invitation himself. He himself had to give out the invitations. He has to furnish the robes himself. So when he met this man there, him sitting at the supper table, how many remember the parable? 
Sure, you that read the Bible. And he found a man at the supper table without a wedding garment on. Remember, the one who does the separation in this end time, the segregation, are the harvesting angels. They are Moses and Elijah. What is it? The bridegroom stands at the door and all come up with an invitation. No man can come to the Father except by me. All the Father has given me or invited will come to me. Here they come, give their invitation, the bridegroom, so that everybody will look alike. That's one thing about good old time. Holy Ghost religion, it makes them all look alike. Whether they are rich or poor, bond or free, black or white, male or female, they're all one in Christ Jesus. And the bridegroom stood at the door and received the invitation. Put the rope around this fellow. So the rich and poor all looked alike. That's the way it is in the kingdom of God. There is no big guys and little guys. They're all one guy, all one in Christ. Now, what do you think when the bridegroom come back and found a man sitting there without a wedding garment on? Said, friend, how'd you get in here? And he stood speechless. It shows that he came some other way besides the door. He come in the window. He come in a back door, and he writes Laodicea, and he called him a friend, showed he was a church member. Friend, how did you get in here without a garment on? Now Jesus said this himself, and he called to the porter, he said, bind him foot and hand. And he writes, the man without a wedding garment, And he writes, the porter equals the one who holds the key. And he was cast out into outer darkness where there will be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. That's Christ's own words, right? He was cast out because it proved without the wedding garment, he comes some other way beside the door. If he would have come by the door, he would have received a wedding garment. Notice, it is required to enter through that door. Oh, listen to this. Then, let us read in the book of the seals. On page... 327. Notice what it tells us here. It says, May the Holy Spirit come down now, the white horse rider, while His Spirit, Spirit of Christ, in the face of Antichrist, and call His own. Call them out, Lord. May now they repent, come quickly to you, and be filled with the oil and the wine, and be changed from that denominational robe of Cain's death unto a snow-white robe of eternal life, given out by the bridegroom, and then they'll go to the wedding supper someday in the vindicated word and he writes Moses of the resurrection to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Notice that it is required to enter through that door through that vindicated word which is the one that gives the yes or the no. That is something very but very important that we must not overlook because he's showing us there that the porter is the one that holds the key. He goes on to say, Oh, listen to this. Revelation chapter 4. Oh, listen to this. Then if the wedding garment is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how are we going to be represented in any other way? How are we going to be represented in any other way? 
if we don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that wedding garment, if the first church age had to come by the door, Christ Jesus, be baptized into the name of Jesus Christ, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, to put on the wedding garment, how are we coming any other way? In other words, there he wrote, the wedding garment. And further on, He says, all right, same voice, Revelation 21 or Revelation 1.10 and 13. And I want you to notice, the voice that he heard speaking to him had the clearness of a trumpet. You know how a trumpet sounds. It gives a shrill sound. What does a trumpet mean in the Bible? War. Anytime you see a trumpet blown in a war, in the Bible time, it sounded meant a war, either a revelation or something to take place. Notice how that trumpet sound in that voice that he says, the voice that he heard speaking to him had the clearness of a trumpet. And he says, that meant a war or a revelation or something to take place. He goes on to say, now he, after the church ages was over and everything was come ready, made ready the seating of the fourth chapter here, the church ages was done. He had done left the earth, you see? Remember, the voice that spoke to him behind him in the seven golden candlesticks, the work was finished. And now that same voice was speaking up in heaven. What was it? He had done redeem his people. His earthly work was finished. And he was in glory calling John, come up hither. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are, remember, in a heavenly age. That makes me feel like shouting on the eve of New Year. Oh my, there you are. See, ready, come up hither. And he writes, the great trumpet, New Year equals of Jubilee. War, this is the setting of the great battle. The people that rejected God's message rejected the Holy Spirit, the messenger of the seven churches. The one that has rejected this message of His grace had nothing left, but judgment was ready. And he writes, the plagues. Oh, while he was making ready to pour out the plagues upon the earth now, come up hither, and I'll show you And he writes, below Revelation 11, Moses and Elijah and the plagues. And I'll show you what's fixing to take place. Christ rejecting godless sinners. I'm going to pour out my wrath upon them. Watch the setting. Oh, as we go down through the night, you'll get more of it and more of it all the time. We can't get it everything in here. We have to keep referring from place to place. How that's going to be a terrible thing for those when the last trumpet sounds, and when the last battle is fought, when the last sermon is preached, when the last song is sung, and we stand at the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to be asked, why didn't you receive it? What did you do with the life that I give you? You'll be asked to give a reason. What then? Notice, and he writes, the last trumpet, the plagues fall. And he also writes, throne, judgment seat. In other words, they will be asked why they did not receive it. This subject that we have in this little Bible study, we will place what he wrote down there. The porter equals the one who holds the key. The porter equals the one who holds the key. He is the one who will give the yes or no. And there he told us that they are Moses and Elijah. It's been a great privilege for me to be able to send you this greeting. Under this subject, the porter, the one who holds the key. Today, Wednesday, September 21st of this year, 2022. I'm grateful to all who have been praying for this passage of Hurricane Fiona through Puerto Rico, which left several disasters in several areas of Puerto Rico. 
But thank God here in the tent and the facilities, although there were places where it was flooded, only in the parts of the other lands, because in the part where the tent is built, the tent as such, the restrooms, the buildings and everything, and the surroundings, that was not flooded. Only the lower part, the parking lot, and the surroundings where the river and the creeks ran. That did rise the level quite a bit. And the entire parking lot, the lower part, which are areas that they are at the corresponding levels, all that was flooded. But the part of the tent as such, everything remained intact. Thanks to God, we also passed. As I was telling Brother Miguel on Monday, this week I told him, Brother Miguel, thanks to God, the tent passed another test, the part of the flood. He also passed that test. It is to say that it passed the wind test, also some earthquakes that occurred a couple of years ago. Also, although more earthquakes are still predicted to come, which... The big one that is coming, the one we know is coming, which is possibly the one for the resurrection, which is when Los Angeles, California will sink, will be thrown into the sea. That earthquake possibly, says Brother William, that will be the one for the resurrection. And let us hope that God will keep the great tent cathedral standing or if it is only for the purpose for which God raised it up, which is the purpose in which we are now, enjoying all this teaching, and then it will be taken away. Well, let the divine plans be what they are, and let it be all the perfect will of the Lord. Our desire is that God will live it and that it will remain forever, that it will be something to remember of all that God was doing at this end of the change of kingdom. It would be something like a monument. It would be something very beautiful as we ask God that God will grant it, that he will leave it, let's say, as evidence that there was the place where God was bringing us all that revelation and where God was giving us the rapturing faith as a testimony of all mankind that will be living in the millennium and those who will then be with eternal life in eternity. But meanwhile, I can tell you that it also passed the test of the flood and everything is working very but very well. We thank the brethren who have been there these days and have been there today as well, helping. But practically everything is already in place. They are fixing some gates and uh, some landscaping. Electricity is still out. And we are working with generators, electric generators. But about the rest, some fences that fell down. We are reestablishing that as well. But everyone is fine. The brethren are fine, thank God. For sure, one or the other, they have been calling me because they have lost some things but they are well. And in the Dominican Republic, Neftali, the son of our brother Chamon, was telling me, and also Chamon told me, there in Dominican Republic, that also with the passing of the hurricane, I believe that a pastor in one of the cities, the church was flooded, and also I believe that the house, the water took, took it away. But in everything else, they are fine thanks to the Lord. So we thank all the brethren, brothers and sisters who were praying. And that, notice that the enemy tries to give that blow and tries to take away, let's say, earthly things. But all that is temporary. Life is the most important thing. While the enemy tries to hit us, to break us, we take, we gain more strength and we hold on more to the Lord and faith is increasing. The enemy tries to take something from us and God gives us that strength and that power to go ahead, holding on to the Lord more and cry more to God and enter more and more in desperation. This shakes each one of us because we know that we are not from here and we are going through this season on this planet Earth with a divine purpose. And it is, in the end time, 
to be to the image and likeness of our beloved Lord Jesus Christ in that eternal and glorified body, so that when that faith is at such a high level, and our beloved brother William Soto Santiago comes in his eternal and glorified body also, with those who have departed from our age, and also Brother Branham with his group and all the messengers, and they come to be with us, we are then ready to be transformed. And when we are called unto account, when we are told, as he says there, he says, you will be called to give a reason and you will be told, why didn't you receive it? We will be told, blessed are the children of God. Blessed are the elect of God that you have received it. You have received the full fulfillment of the coming of the Lord because the Son of Man comes with His angels. And I thank God, we thank God that we have been granted to know these mysteries and we have received the sent one of God. We have received what God has promised at this time which will bring us the faith, is giving us the rapturing faith. The others will be told, why didn't you receive it? What did you do with the life that I gave you? It is the question that Brother Branham says will be asked. You will be called to give a reason. But to us it will be said, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord, which is prepared for the saints. In other words, all that will be a reality for the elect of God of this end time, that we have received and have entered through the porter, through the door, through the one that holds the key, through the one that our brother William says there who wrote Moses and Elijah. That is the word that settles it. The one that gives the yes or the no. And at this time, we have been receiving all that teaching, all that revelation containing the seven thunders, which are speaking consecutively in our age, in the age of the cornerstone. Again, I reiterate to all of you for the prayers that you have been making for the people of Puerto Rico and also to Santo Domingo and Haiti for the passing of this hurricane. And I reiterate that we are doing very well, thanks to the Lord, who placed His hand and took care of us and kept us at all times. And He will keep us until our transformation. It's been a great privilege for me to be able to speak these words of greeting from here from the Great Tent Cathedral here in Puerto Rico. And we thank God that has sent us His angel, His angel messenger, William Soto Santiago, in whom God placed His name, the name that we all already know, because the name is in His angel. We thank God for sending us His angel messenger, William, William Soto, Soto Santiago. Santiago.